So we were approached by the Bronte Parsonage to use Emily Bronte's poetry and to make them into songs and in some ways maybe we didn't quite realise what a scary task we were taking on. <laughs> so we just kind of approached it like we would any other material really. We love the Young Thanks music so we were absolutely thrilled when they agreed to work with us on this commission. And we were also really interested in the idea that they were contemporary musicians who work in a folk tradition. Emily's work and Wuthering Heights and her poetry comes from a place of folklore so we thought that that would be a really fitting tribute to create 21st century music with those traditions for her bicentenary year. And it was Adrian who has been coming back and forth to the parsonage and being inspired by Emily's piano. That was a really interesting um, opportunity, I think. Really unique to be mm. able, for Adrian to be able to come in and write the, the music for the poems on her actual piano. It's been a total pleasure. I've developed quite an affinity with the instrument. It's, it's very pretty sounding. Um, I feel like it's what I've been looking for uh, for, for years. Emily was the most musical of all the Bronte siblings. It's believed that she was quite an accomplished pianist and she played the piano here at the Parsonage. It's a really unusual piano and it was restored in 2010. When I first came to it, I, I, I thought perhaps I, I wouldn't be able to get on with it. It's, um, uh, it took me maybe about half an hour to realise that it wasn't it that was the problem, it was me. Uh, and uh, I kind of had to succumb to its idiosyncrasies and, and um, the quieter I played it, the, the, the better it sounded. It was really difficult to choose which poems because there's so many of them. And, um, and they're quite long. Some of them are really long, yeah. So they'd be like proper ballads. And we have, you know, done we, a couple of long ones. We have done some long ones and we seriously considered some other long ones. Um, but we've had to cut it down um, to an, al an album yeah. load. Well, I, I, I have to wait till the museum's closed before I can, I can come and before I'm allowed to play it because it's a working museum, so it closes at five and then I'm, I'm allowed in. So it's all been at, at night. Um, you know, I don't believe in ghosts any, or anything, but it's certainly, I can certainly say it was at least atmospheric uh, to be in there at night um, writing on Emily's piano in perhaps a room adjacent to which she wrote the poems. This project is a new and exciting thing for us but in a way we treat it like we treat any, anything which is to try and tell the story of the words that are there and I think that's how we've approached this as well. Well I think we always look to be moved mm -hmm. by words and and emotionally and with Emily Bronte's poetry um, they're very passionate and dark and, and that's something that um, we always look for in material. It makes a change that we've kind of been outdone on the dark front as well. Our music has always been synonymous with dark subject matter, and but you know, Emily's in her own league. Every time you do a project, you take a little bit of what you've learned onto the next one, and or just to you know, like life, isn't it? You know. So I think now, Emily Bronte. Has She's definitely influenced the sound of the Unthanks. Yeah, yeah, and her work is now like. And her words are now like a, a part of our lives and that's really, I'm really grateful for that. Winter.